okay so now we'll be discussing about electrical network transfer functions wherein the circuit involves multiple loops no for this type of um, circuit so we will uh, apply our knowledge in tcl no so the first thing to do is to apply our knowledge uh, in uh, i said tcl not tcl but in kvl or the kirchhoff's current law no so we will now um try to solve no a a circuit no try to get it as a function of a circuit in which the circuit involves multiple loop no so maybe i'll just type here the question no so we need to find the transfer function so it will be Okay, so we have here the uh, problem now. Find the transfer function I2 of S over V of S for the circuit shown. So I have already drawn the the uh, circuit now. So we have here a circuit now in which we have two resistors and an inductor and a capacitor. So we have here the source now. And we need to find the transfer function in terms of this one now, I2 of S over v of s no so the first thing to do for this one let's just move here the problem no so the first thing to do is to transform first the the whole circuit no the the whole component circuit the resistor the resistance the inductance and the capacitance including the voltage source and the current as uh, the their equivalent um laplace transform no so we have here the equivalent circuit for that one so this will be v of s no then this one so this is the resistance so it just become r1 and we have here the inductor no okay so it will become ls no then this will be r1 no? then we have here this will be r2 then we have the capacitor over here which will be 1 over c of s then plus and minus vc of s then the currents no so we have here uh, i1 of s then we have um, i2 of s okay so now we will apply kvl no so for example this will be our loop one and this will be our loop 2 no so kvl at loop 1 no so that will be that will be vs no so we will use the red one no? so this will be vs then uh, minus no the voltage drop so that will be uh, i1 of s times r1 including this one also so minus um i1 times uh, i1 uh, of s times ls then this one because we will be considering also this current and this is opposite to uh, to the current i1 so this will be plus no the i2 of s um, times so this uh, the i2 of s will travel on this inductor so ls this will be equal to zero then we just um transfer our uh, this this group here to the other side of the equation so we will we'll end up with vs is equal to uh, i1 of s no so that will be r1 plus this one ls minus i2 of s times ls no then we just uh, write this one in reverse no maybe i will write first clearly my l of s okay so this will be l of s no so writing this one no so we have i1 of s this will be r1 plus l of s okay 
then minus I2 of S times L of S is equal to V of S. So this will be our equation 1. Okay. Okay, so now we will apply also KVL at loop 2. No? So KVL at loop number 2. Okay. So that will be equal to so voltage drop. No? So we have negative um, I2 of S times LS minus I2 of S times that will be I believe R2. No? This one. So that will be R2. Then we have uh, plus no? the I1. So I1 of S times L of S. Okay. Then the another voltage drop will be our C, our capacitance. So that will be minus I2 times I2 times uh, I2 of S times 1 over CS. This will be equal to 0. No? Then uh, multiplying both sides, uh, no, we just first group no, the like terms. So we have I1 of S times ls that will be minus so we have all negative i2 so i2 of s is equal to this one ls plus r2 for this one then plus 1 over c of s uh, c times s no? c times s is equal to 0 so multiply both sides by negative 1 so that our i2 will be positive so we have negative I1 of S, L of S. Of course, you 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 did not uh, need to multiply negative 1. No? But for me, um, I just like to have my I2 as negative, uh, positive. No? Okay? So this will be LS plus I2 of S, L, L of S plus R2 plus 1 over CS is equal to 0. Okay? So from this one, we will create our matrix, no? So in order to do that, first we need to list, no? On the first matrix, no? The first matrix, the uh, the coefficient of I1 and I2, no? So for equation one, the coefficient of I1 is R1 plus LS. So this in this one we have R1 plus LS. The coefficient for I2 is uh, negative no because it is minus uh, i2 so that will be negative negative ls no now for equation 2 the coefficient of i1 is negative ls also so negative ls while for i2 is positive ls plus r2 plus 1 over cs okay then we have here the coefficients no this so this will be i1 of s i2 of s then we have equal to that will be equal to so the constants no for the equation one that will be v uh, v of s no not v s so this is v of s what is that equation one so you are v of s not v s no v of s okay then for equation two this will be zero okay now for this one we will use Kramer's rule, you no? Know? Kramer's rule in uh, solving the solving the I2 of S, no? Because we need to get the transfer function in terms of I2 of S. So we have I2 of S is equal to the matrix, you no? Know? In terms of I2 of S over the uh, the matrix itself, you no? Know? The original matrix. So that will be equal to. So when we say the matrix for I2 of S, so the coefficients of I2 of S, we will replace that one with this equation of constant. So that will become R1 plus LS over neg uh, the negative LS. So this part here, this part we will replace with this one. No? Okay. So because this part is the part of the I2 of S. So because we are going to get the matrix in terms of I2 of S, so we will just put here there no? this constant on the uh, coefficients no? uh, or the part on the coefficients of i2 of s so we have v of s over zero then we will uh, have the original matrix which is this one 
so that will be equal to uh, that will be over uh, matrix R1 plus LS negative LS minus LS over uh, LS plus R2 plus 1 over CS no so this is how you are going to apply Kramer's rule no okay next we'll get the, de the determinant for our matrix on the upper side and in the lower side no the numerator and the denominator so for this one the matrix for this one is the determinant for that this one is just the diagonal no the diagonal way of solving the determinants so we have r1 plus ls times 0 minus a negative ls times v of s no over for the one below so this will be equal to so this one here no that we have r1 times ls times ls plus r2 plus 1 over cs that will be minus negative ls times negative ls okay so this will be equal to zero then we have here positive no negative and negative that will be positive um, ls times v of s okay for the denominator so first we will distribute no this one so we will multiply these two functions here so we have uh, first the r1 we distribute r1 for this every term of this function so we have r1 times ls plus r1 times r2 plus uh, that will be um, r1 over cs then next one will be the ls so we have plus ls times ls plus ls times r2 plus ls over over cs no then this will be plus ls squared no oh, no it is uh, positive then we have a minus so that will be still negative no this will just be still negative now what happened next is we have here ls squared this is also ls squared this is negative and this is positive so we could cancel out that one so we'll end up with uh, ls times v of s over so this will be um, r1 times ls plus r1 r2 plus r1 over cs plus ls times r2 plus ls over cs okay so we'll combine like terms so all of the terms having uh, ls no so we will have this one as r1 plus r2 no ls then for this one also we will have here uh, we'll have uh, plus no plus r1 then r2 then combining all the terms with uh, c over s no the name of c over s then that will be r1 plus ls over c c over s no so this will be the denominator no so we just have that one ls v of s okay so simplifying further our denominator so we will have um, ls v of s over so getting the uh, getting the common denominator for this uh, functions here so that will be over uh, cs no so we will have um, r1 plus r2 times l c s squared no because we have we will uh, multiply the cs to our ls no plus r1 r2 times cs plus r1 plus r2 so we will uh we will simplify this one further so this will go up no so we will have um l c s squared v of s over r1 plus r2 l c s squared no lc is squared then that will be um, plus 
R1, R2, uh, CS, uh, CS plus, I believe this is not R2 but LS, no? LS, no? LS, okay. So, this will be LS. LS. Plus, R1 plus LS. Okay. So, now we will simplify further. No? So, we just, um, this will be equal to, wait, wait, no? let's just see first. Okay. So, this will be um, equal to, we have here, LC S squared, V of S over, uh, over um, R1 plus R2 times um, LCS squared then plus um, we need to um, combine no, uh, terms with S no? so this will be R1 R2 uh, times C plus L then times S so we factor out S plus R1. No? Or you could still have this one, no? this above. No? So, that is still the same. You'll still get the same answer. I answer no? For this one also, because we are simplifying this one, because our given value are not numbers, but also variables themselves. So, it is much easier to um, express this one in, uh, to simplify our equation. So, now getting the transfer function. So, I2 of S over Vs. So, we just multiply both sides no by you know by 1 over vs no so here we have i2 of s so 1 over vs so we'll end up with l c s squared over r1 plus r2 times l c s squared plus r1 r2 c plus l s plus R1. And this now will be our transfer function. Okay? So I hope you understand something in this video. And as always, enjoy learning.